So we're going to find all the factors of this number, all 30 of them besides 1 and 43,368. So, so we're going to check it makes sense to start low and do the easy ones first. The easiest one, well, 2 is very obvious, but check by that because it ends in 8, so it's even. And any even number is divisible by 2. And then for 3, we add up the digits, the values of the digits. So 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 3 is 10, plus 6 is 16, plus 8 is 24, which is a multiple of 3. So check. Now 4. The last two digits are divisible by 4. 68, that's 17 times 4. If you really don't know your multiples of 4 up to 25, that's really all you have to know because it repeats. Uh, when it gets to 100, it goes to 0, 4, 0, 8, and so forth. But anyway, the little shortcut is 6 plus whatever the this digit is, the 1's digit divided by 2, which happens to be 4, and 6 plus 4 is 10. And if that's even, then the number is divisible by 4. That's a little shortcut. If you do that same trick on, say, 66, you would get 6 plus 6 over 2, which is 3, which is 9, that's odd, and so the number is not divisible by 4. That's a little trick I, I discovered just using the patterns. So 5 is an, is an obvious no. 6 is a check automatically because it's divisible by 2 and 3. Now 7, we're, we're going to leave that one for later because that has a little bit more complex rule. 8 is actually not all that hard. You look at the last three digits. The little shortcut here is three plus, and you know the number has to be divisible by four to be divisible by eight. 68 over four, this is the trick, is comes out to an even number when you do this. What you do is you actually divide the 68 by four because you know it's divisible by four. You add it to the value of the hundredth digit, which is three. 3 plus 17 gives you an even number, and the rule is, if it is an even number here, when you do that, then the entire number is divisible by 8. It's divisible by 8, yes. Look, at it. since 8 goes into 200, the nearest multiple of 200 to 368 is 400, and you just look at the difference. That gives you 32 which is a multiple of 8, so therefore this entire number is a multiple of 8. 9 is a no because when we added the same uh, concept as 3, you add the values of the digits, but if you add these up, it adds to 24, which is not a multiple of 9, so 9 is a no. And so we can rule out all multiples of 5 and 9 for now, and 10 is an obvious no, it's a multiple of 5, and it doesn't end in a 0, which is the rule for 10. Now 11, the rule is actually kind of simple once you get it. The, uh, you add the values of the odd number of digits. So you add the first digit, which is a 4, the third digit, which is a 3, you skip over the second digit, and here's the fourth, and then the fifth digit. 4 plus 3 plus 8 is 15. So let's jot that down. However, our, our sum was of oh, the entire number. You add the second and the fourth, the even number digits, in other words. The second digit and the fourth digit, 3 plus 6 is 9. If both sums are 10, then it's divisible by 11. Or let's say one sum is 21, the other is 10. Because there's a difference of 11, or say if it's 20, a really big number and the difference is 22, if it's 0, if the difference in those sums between the even number digits and the odd number digits are equal, or they differ by 11 or 22 or some multiple of 11, then it's divisible. But 15 minus 9 is what we got, which is 6, so it's not divisible by 11. 12 is an, is an automatic yes because it's divisible by 3 and 4, and the concept is 3 and 4 have no common factors. They're called relatively prime, co-prime, whatever. They're prime to one another, even though 4 is not prime, 3 is, but they don't have any common factors, because the only other factor of 4 besides 1 and 4 are 
is two. Uh, you don't double count two, by the way. It's a square number. So all square numbers will have an, an odd number of factors. And so anything to an even power will have an odd number of factors. Now 13, we're going to check here in just a minute. 14, we're not sure of because if it, we know it's divisible by 2. If it's also divisible by 7, it will be divisible by 14. 15, obviously not. 3 passes, but 5 fails. 3 and 5 are relatively prime, and they're both prime. So if they're both prime, they're automatically relatively prime. So 15, obviously, no. Now 16, we're going to take the same concept as the rule for 8. 16 is a power of 2. It's 2 to the 4th power. So you, you look at the last four digits. So you look at the 33, 68, and what you do, again, you break off the 68 divided by 4. 33 plus 17 is 50. And if this is divisible by 4, which 50 is not divisible by 4, so it's not divisible by 16. For 17, we don't know yet. Uh, 18 is an automatic no because 2 passes, 9 fails. They're relatively prime. So uh, if it's divisible by both, then it would be divisible by 18. 19, no. 20 is an obvious no because uh, you know it doesn't end in a 0. And, and then this would also have to be even. Which that's even. If it were 60, then it would be divisible by 20. But no. Now 21, we're not sure because 3 passes, it's divisible by 3, but we don't know if it's divisible by 7 yet. 22 uh, is a no because 11 fails. 2 and 11 would be implied 22. 23, we're not sure of. And the only other one, well, 25 is obviously a fail because 5 doesn't work. It would have to end in 2 fives, 50 or 75 or 0, 0. Now 24 is a yes because... 3 and 8. Now, 4 and 6 do not prove divisibility by 24. It's an important concept. 3 and 8, however, do because, like, like I was talking about, relatively prime, the other factors of 8 are 2 and 4. And, of course, 3 is prime number, and that's not included in the factors of 8, so they're relatively prime, so therefore their product is divisible. This number is divisible by their product. So 43, 368 is divisible by 24. And that's really the, the highest one we know for now. But there is one other one. It's, it, it turns out it's not 7. We did the test for 7. We did the test. And so if that knocks out 14 and 21. And 17 and 19 failed. And 23 failed. But 13 worked. When I, when I tested this one. Kind of what you do when you do long division, except we're just going to subtract a known multiple. You know 13 goes into 39, so you know it'll go into 39,000. Because this is 39 times 1,000. So we get 4,368. And again, let's subtract 3,900 now. Because you know it'll go into 13 times 3 is 39. So you subtract this, and you get... 468, and if you subtract 390 using the same concept here, that 13 times 3 is 39, so therefore go to 390 as well. And that difference right here is 78, which is 6 times 13, and because 6 is an integer, therefore it is divisible by 13. So that is now no longer question mark. We have checked for that. The other rule for 13 would be subtracting, or actually adding, be breaking apart like this. So you do this, you break it up, 4,336 plus, it's four times, you add four times the ones digit. So that's 32, that gives you 4,368. And then you, re, you it, it's an iterative process, so you, you do it again. And that breaks into 436, and then you add four times one's digit, which is 32 again. 
that gives you 468. And then finally, that breaks down to four, 46 and 8. And again, it's 4 times 8, which is 32. And that gives you 78, which is 6 times 13. So by that method, you'll get the same results. Our factors were 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, because 3 and 4, and 6 was because of 2 and 3, and 13, um, 14, no, 15, no, 16, no, we tested for no, 17 was a no, I tested for that separately, can't be divisible by 18 because it's not divisible by 9, 19, no, 20, no, because it's done in 0, 10 obviously doesn't work, we added the digits, it's divisible by 3 but not 9, 20, and then 21 is out because it's not divisible by 7, 22 it's not divisible by 11, 23 was a no, 24 was a yes because of 3 and 8. And then the next one, because of 2 and 13, was going to be 26. So that's how we get our, our additional factors. And then, let's see, we have 3 and 13, that's going to be 39. 4 and 13, since 13 is prime to all, relatively prime, uh, to all these numbers, then they're, this will be divisible by their product. So that'd be, uh, let's see, 6 times 13 would give you 78. Um, 8 times 13 give you 104. And then 12 times 13 give you 156. And then finally, you would get 312. But this is 139. And 139, I know, is prime, so that's another prime factor. So the prime factorization, if you're curious, well, we have 312, which would be 2 times 2 times 2, because we have divisibility up to 8. And then we have 3. And of course, 2 is the prime factor that leads to that 8. Um, but 4 and 6 are not prime, and nor is 12, but then, okay, let's include 3, and then 13, and then that's times 139 is also prime. And this is a, a comma, not, not 43.368. So you could also write that as 2 cubed times 3 times 13 times 139. So those, that's the prime factorization of that. And then you can find, you know, this would be twice this, so this would be 278. And then you double that, um, it's 78. You could figure all these out just by using, a, using Excel, using your calculator, whatever.